Hello friends, today is my third interesting case. So let me begin my first case here. This is a 50 year old female. She had a hypothyroidism and hypertension rose on medications. She had a radiotherapy for a carcinoma vocal cord 12 years ago. Now she has come with a recurrent uh, transient ischemic attacks in the right carotid territory. She had a weak transient weakness and numbness of left upper and lower limb, facial deviation, dysarthria. Clinical examination showed that she is fully conscious and oriented, no focal neurological signs, there is no carotid bruit on either side and there is a no posterior blood pressure and the carotid cardiovascular system normal, no mur uh, murmurs. The investigation showed were normal, MRI did not show any infarcts or any acute or chronic infarcts and the MRI angiogram showed a long segment stenosis of the right carotid and the Doppler also showed a stenosis of the right uh, carotid carotid. She underwent a cerebral DSC, we showed there is a occlusion of the left common carotid from its arch, from the origin from the arch. The left vertebral artery was dominant and the right brachiocephalic trunk there is a myostenosis at the origin and there is a long segment ulcerated plaques in the right distal common carotid as well as the proximal internal carotid. And the, and the interesting finding also there, I will show, I will come to that. You can see that uh, this is the dominant left uh, carotid artery. You can see that this is subclavian, this is the internal mammary artery, costo cervical, and the thyro cervical and costo cervical. It's a large uh, left vertebral artery. And this is a brachiocephalic trunk on the right side. This is the mild stenosis at the proximal, but it's not significant. And this is the vertebral artery, it's fairly good one, but probably there's uh, some, some amount of osteostenosis there. This is the left common carotid artery which is occluded from the origin just after the arch because the catheter is just uh, you know there is no flow beyond this segment. And this is the right uh, common carotid artery you can see there is a ulcerative plaques there are ulcerative plaques here and this, uh, the uh, lesion start from here almost up to this level it is a long segment uh, even the, the external carotid also seems to be slightly affected. And this is the carotid, typical carotid steel. That means uh, the carotid artery is stealing blood from the vertebral vascular system through the posterior communicating artery. That means that uh, whenever he uh, chew food for a long time or he eats, he is likely to get a vertebral vascular TA in the form of diplopia, dysarthria, or facial numbness, ataxia, bilateral weakness, bilateral sensor symptoms, or uh, other uh, cranial nerve involvement, vertigo, dizziness, syncope, and fall. Any, any of the combination can occur like just like the subclavian steel syndrome whenever you work excessively excessively with the hand either right hand or left side depending on where the subclavian artery is tenos proximal to the origin of the vertebral artery then this would steal blood from the the upper limb would steal blood from the uh, vertebral basilar system so uh, so much so that he can develop all the vertebral basilar taa it can even result in stroke so, th this is uh, you know the carotid steel you can see that this is the vertebral artery, okay, the basilar artery, this is the blood going all the way down the uh, common carotid artery and it, it can um, uh, go to supply the external carotid as well. And the patient underwent a stending is called a telescopic stending, there is one stent you can see that the, the proximal carotid artery is uh, uh, covered with the proximal uh, 6 8 uh, aquiline stent. This is followed by another stent uh, that would cover the proximal uh, internal carotid artery. So, 2 is called a telescopic stending of stent. This is the uh, unsubstracted view, and this is a pre stending and this is a post stending. So, this is what happened in patient underwent the telescopic stending of the right common carotid artery as well as internal carotid artery. And uh, on follow up, she never had any recurrence of the TIS. A few words on carotid steel syndrome. You know that the subclavian steel syndrome, whenever there is a uh, stenosis of the subclavian artery prior to the origin of the, uh, the vertebral artery, you can say that uh, the, whenever the, you use the limb, patient would drag blood or draw blood from that ipsilateral vertebral artery from the vertebral system resulting in the vertebral basilar TIAs. So the, the subclavian steel, the subclavian artery stenosis and the subsequent formation of the collaterals 
would serve to alter the pressure gradients in subclavian steel syndrome, altering the ipsilateral vertebral arterial blood flow. A similar flow dynamics can also occur in carotid arteries when there is a proximal stenosis of the proximal common carotid artery or even the innominate artery that would draw blood from the uh, from the you know from the vertebral vessel C system through the PP cone. And in post uh, red radiation stenosis, it is well known because the radiation stenosis can occur uh, maybe years, maybe 5, 10 years or 20 years later. That will result in the uh, increase in the carotid intima media thickening, not only the carotid, maybe the vertebral or the basilar even. And this will lead to a higher degree, higher risk of cerebrovascular events such as TIAs and strokes. So, thank you, thank you very much.